one of her last decisions as, as president of the Supreme Court, that today the laws that were used to expropriate Palestinian land would not have stood the test of constitu constitutionality. So if you're wondering why Israel did not have, did not adopt the constitution in 1950 as it formally declared it would do in the Declaration of Independence, this is a very important reason. If there was a constitution and a Supreme Court with the authority of judicial review, it would have been much, much harder to expropriate this Arab land. So, Zionist experience in Palestine was both on top of the Palestinians, side by side, by side by side, the deep effects of them, and at the end, instead of them. Now, the real test is, what does the colonial thesis explain that other theses cannot explain about the history of Zionism and the history of Israel? I would say that probably the most important thing that can explain, be explained by the colonial thesis is the continued occupation of the territories occupied in 1967. Just to remind you, the British mandate in Palestine lasted 30 years. Israel, within its 1948 borders, lasted 19 years. Greater Israel, including the occupied Palestinian territories, has so far lasted 45 years and is showing no signs of going away. Now, the settlers, especially in the West Bank, they always argued, we are not different than the pioneers of the pre-1948 period. It's against liberal Zionist arguments that this is something unusual, this is something, it's an aberration of Zionism, it's a colonial project, there was no question, there is no question among liberal Zionists in Israel that the settlement project in the occupied territories, meaning now the West Bank, is a colonial project. 